The seasons, they're a changing. Uh, with the spring equinox, uh, the season of spring has begun uh, in the northern hemisphere, uh, and it's happening earlier uh, than, uh, you know, over the last 50 years. And with us to talk about it today is uh, uh, Dr. Tucker uh, with NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Dr. Tucker, uh, thank you so much for having some time for us. Uh, good morning. Well, well, tell us, so, so it's a new season in the northern hemisphere for us. It's spring with the equinox. Uh, how does that happen? And, and why is it important for the, uh, the changing seasons on Earth? Okay, well, the first thing is today is the first day of spring. And for those of us who live in the eastern half of the United States, we've had a very cold winter. And we have some surface temperature data where we can look, and the blue colors in the eastern part of the U.S. mean we had surface temperatures this winter five to seven degrees below average, whereas in the western United States and in Alaska and across Canada, we had much warmer conditions by about the same amount, five to seven degrees warmer. When we average all the surface temperatures, the winter temperatures for 2014 to date, January and February, were warmer than average. So the planet is continuing to warm, but because of the peculiarities of weather, some areas are colder and some areas are still warmer. And this is what we've experienced. And for all of us in the eastern U.S., we're ready for spring. <laughs> I don't think it can come soon enough, you know? Um, That's exactly now, right. Now tell us, I guess, you, you, so it, it's, it's, it's warmer uh, on average, um, but it's, uh, it's becoming, uh, it's, spring is coming a little bit earlier, um, you know, over the last 50 years. I'm just wondering why that is. Is it just because the planet itself is, is warming up? Uh, is, it, is it some other factor with the, uh, with the equinox? No, it's not due to anything else except for global warming. The planet is warming up. And we have some figures which show the, the frost-free period as of March the 20th today from the early 1950s in these light green colors. And then it, the darker green colors are for the past few years where we see the frost-free period has now moved north. If we look at April 20th, most of the 48 states were free of frost on this date. And now we add the data more recently, and we see in 50 years the frost-free area on this date, April the 20th, has moved further north. Uh, this is why we say spring is coming earlier, and in North America, this is about five days earlier from the 1950s to now. Wow. Wow. How does that affect, uh, I guess, just, just everything that depends on seasons? I think of, of birds migrating, flowers coming up, uh, summer around the corner. Does that mean that... Uh, all of the seasons there are shifting, or is it just, just spring itself? Well, it's uh, what we have is an earlier start to spring and a later end to fall. And so the growing season is getting longer. This affects birds. One of the big effects which we are seeing right now is in areas which depend upon the snowpack for water. It warms up, the water runs off sooner. Then during the summer with higher temperatures, forests dry out, we have wildfires. This can be a major problem. We also have insect infestations from the warmer weather, which is also very bad for our forests. These are some negative manifestations of global warming. And, um, and I guess for, for, for spring itself, um, now I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of the data for the frost line and whatnot that you have uh, monitoring stations or, or you track it through satellites, how do you measure when exactly spring has come you know, aside from, you know, the March 20th date itself. Okay, we actually do this using satellite data too, and this is one of my specialties. So at the moment, NASA has 19 Earth viewing satellites, which are represented in the figure you see now. Now we're looking at some MODIS data, which shows snow in the winter, and then we move into the spring and into the start of summer, and we see the snow is dissipated, and now we actually see green vegetation on land and how this has progressed. So like you, I'm really looking forward to a further um, a warmer weather in spring and to a very warm summer. And you know, my last question is: is um, you know, we saw uh, the we're seeing the the, the launch of uh, NASA's uh, GPM satellite earlier uh, in the year. Uh, there's I think five in 2014 alone going up. And yes. I'm wondering how uh, new advanced satellites uh, can continue the trend. Of, of tracking just Earth's seasons, Earth's climate from space, and just informing how we, uh, I guess, how we live on a day-to-day -day basis. You make a very good point that as time goes on, we get more clever and we have better instruments to measure 
these variables about the Earth's weather and climate system. And what climate is is simply weather through time. And the Global Precipitation Mission is a good example of this. It provides better data over more of the Earth than we had from the Tropical Rainfall Monitoring Mission, but yet the data are consistent with the Tropical Rainfall Monitoring Mission data, and we can continue this record then into the future with a higher precision. And this is true with many of the satellite launches that are coming up. Either they start new measurements, as we have in the Soil Moisture Active Passive Mission, which is scheduled for launch shortly, uh, as well as we have with the Global Precipitation Mission. But once again, without space, we wouldn't have this detailed understanding of our planet that has resulted in better numerical weather prediction, as well as our study of climate. Space.com.